Good day. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic, I'm going to discuss weighted averages. So in this topic, we will describe the weighted average of a given set of values. We will then look at two applications that use weighted averages to get a better approximation of a result than, say, by simply using the arithmetic mean or average of a set of values. To begin, given n values x1 through xn, which may be scalars or even vectors, the arithmetic mean or just what's normally called the average of these values is simply the sum of the values divided by n. Now, if each of these values, x1 through xn, approximates some unknown value x, then so does the average. And under certain circumstances, the average may actually be a better estimation of x than any one of the samples. Now, if instead we have n additional scalars w1 through wn such that the sum of these weights is equal to 1, then a weighted average of the values x1 through xn is the linear combination w1 times the first x value plus w2 times the second all the way up until wn times xn. For example, assuming each assignment, project, laboratory, and examination is graded out of 100, then your final grade in a course is a weighted average of your evaluations. The arithmetic mean is when all of the weights are equal to 1 over n. Now, once again, the arithmetic mean is also going to estimate the value that the values x1 through xn estimate. Now there's no requirement that the weights be positive. We've already seen this. Recall the example where given n samples uniformly chosen from the interval a to b but where we do not know what the values of A are or B are, then one approximation of the lower bound was the minimum of these X values. This was one way to estimate the lower bound A, but a better way of estimating A was a weighted average of the min and the max. So if we took n times the minimum value of these n values minus the maximum of those n values and divided by n minus 1, that we saw was a better approximation of the lower bound a. In this case, the weights are n over n minus 1 and negative 1 over n minus 1. And if you'll note, the sum of these two values is always equal to 1. If we have the additional constraint that all of the weights are non-negative, then we also have one additional guarantee, specifically that the weighted average must be between the minimum and maximum values of the items we are taking a weighted average of. Of course, if all the weights are non-negative, none of the weights can be greater than 1. So consequently, all the weights must be between 0 and 1. If all the weights are non-negative, the weighted average is also called a convex combination of the objects that are being weighted. Now important. 
It's not so much that we will explicitly use weighted averages in this course, but rather weighted averages will be the result of applying other tools to finding numerical algorithms. There is one bonus. If our algorithm is using a weighted average, then it will not be necessarily subject to subtractive cancellation. This is true even if some of the weights are negative. So normally we have to be very concerned if we're taking a difference between two values. But because all of the weights must sum to one, having occasional weights that are negative may not be as detrimental. We'll see this throughout the course. We can also use this to catch errors. If you are creating a formula and the coefficients appear to be close to but not perfectly matching a weighted average, it's probably a good idea to go back and check. Now recall from your calculus that the integral of f going from a to b is simply the area under this curve between those endpoints. Now one approximation of this integral is simply f at a times the width of the interval b minus a. Actually, while this may be a poor approximation in general, it's uh, used in Riemann sums, uh, but it's actually okay if f is at least approximately constant along the interval from a to b. Another approximation of the integral is to take the average of the value of the function at the endpoints. And this gives us the formula we see here. You can either think of it as the average of the two endpoints, or it's also known as the trapezoidal rule for approximating the value of the integral. Once again, this is still an okay approximation if f is almost straight on the interval from a to b. And later on in this course, we will do additional error analysis on such approximations. Now in approximating the integral, the point a plus b over 2 is the midpoint of the interval a b. Here's two additional approximations of the integral. In this first one, we're simply going to sample the value of the function at the endpoints and at the midpoint. And what we're going to do is we will take the arithmetic mean of these values. And so therefore, the weights are one third, one third, and one third. Here's a different approximation. This approximation of the value of the function is taken a weighted average of the values f at a, f at the midpoint, and f at b. And now the weights are one-sixth, two-thirds, one-sixth. So significantly more weight is being placed on the central point rather than on the endpoints. So we are estimating the value of the function through a weighted average. Now, which of these approximations is going to be a better approximation of the integral? Well, if your function is a constant signal with white noise, then the arithmetic mean is actually going to be the best approximation. However, engineers normally deal with the real world, and in the real world, there's momentum. And so functions tend to be generally nice, being continuous and usually differentiable. 
So following this topic, you now have an understanding of the concept of a weighted average. And you know that the arithmetic mean is simply a special case of a weighted average. You know that the weights need not necessarily be positive. And you have seen two applications where weighted averages are used. Now we haven't analyzed those yet, and we don't understand why one is better than the other, but in both applications, the weighted average provided a better approximation of what we were trying to calculate than simply using the arithmetic mean.